sucked in and inspired, moved and in tears, suspense, hearts beating, stiff and in fear, faces awash with colors from the screen, eyes torn open, no interrupts please, sitting so tightly right up until the credits start rolling and reality creeps in. Emotions restable, postmortems begin. Wow, that was so well directed. Did you see how he cried? Oh, how he acted! How awesome and inspiring! How clever! What art! What a movie full of love! Him of rage, her of heart! And when we retreat back to our mundane lives, let's relive those moments, the truths and the lies. Never mind, they're not real, or that while we do, we offer our energies and memories to a story that wasn't, and people that weren't, and words that were scripted and rescripted and rescripted, the story then edited and marketed and sold. Make believe is a game that we claim to confine to you than the insane. Yet strange, isn't it, that the people we adore are the ones who make a living off of make-believe that we pay for? Why do we owe so much heart to all these, when you did much more and did it for real? I don't understand. When you forsook your bed in the dead of the night and laid down your forehead so gentle, so light, how do tears make their way from our hearts to our eyes for people and lyrics and scripts that are lies? When you cried for real, it was us for whom you cried, and you held us so dear. So what if he said that? Why should I do it? Eh, well, his approach is just one way to see it. And if he told you something crazy, would you do it? You know, forget what he said, but what do we know instead? Do we even know who we're talking about? Do we know the person, the heart, the soul behind whom we argue and pout? We preach tolerance, but ourselves cannot tolerate the things that you taught. We scream about not judging, but we judge you not knowing a thing about you. We've got an internet loaded with info about all that we could want to know, so we learn about whatever we fancy, about Khan and Rai and Hanks and Jolie and all the Coldplays and Shakiras and Gagas and Kims, how many films to their name, how many days to their films, what tattoos they engrave and their latest X date. We know so much about these people, of these stories that are scripted and edited and marketed and sold. We know all about them, but we don't know about you. When you staggered away on a dreary day, alone, unarmed, your feet weary, when they stoned you and cornered you, but you said not a word in return of their unwarranted fury, when you sank to the floor and bit by bit then you tore your shoes off your bloodied feet, when you spent silent hours in the cave of Thower and assassins above shuffled by, when you held the small body of your dying son and as tears wet your face, you whispered goodbye, when you trembled and asked for the comfort of your dear wife, when she warmed you, when she died and your eyes became wet as you beheld her necklace years later, when you called out her name, though she was no longer with you because you missed her. When your pregnant daughter lost her baby to their violence. When they hacked at the liver of your dead uncle and the streets that you traced were overthrown with waste. And the alleys resounded with the cries of the young because they were famished always. And mothers were defiled in front of sons who were tied down and maimed because they believed you. More than ten years of pain later when you returned, a rightful king but too aware of your king to burn your inflictors with torment which would be fair when they cowered before your power, but you declared an unprecedented reign of mercy and said, go, you're free. You weren't reciting from a script, and you were not safe in front of a camera with a director at your back, and no one edited your scenes. Your delivery was born from your heart and your words were your own. But we don't talk about that. 
And we don't talk about your orphanhood or when your army was startled and scattered, but you stood out tall as you called from your saddle. I am the prophet in truth. Come to me. Arrows and showers pelted around you, but you still radiated bravery. But we talked about robots and sinners and stories of love that isn't dust in the face of your creed. We talked about vampires and Harry and Frodo and angels and demons and aliens and knights and Oscars and Emmys and red carpets and lights, about gadgets and money, what's wrong and what's light. But we don't talk about you. Is it because truth is heavy and you were true? Why is it the entertainment that's fake, that's been paid and designed to captivate on the screen, on the street, and the governing state is so pleasing to us and so worthy of praise? When the most beautiful of all that he designed, the most praised, you did it all. Every time that you raised up your hands and you prayed to the one and the only, t'was for us that you craved, a home where forever we could last all together. And so every breath, every step up that ladder of years of thirst and struggle and hurt and your blood that they splattered on the sun-baked earth, every bite that you shared, every child that you played with every slave that you freed, every smile that you beamed, every glance that was seen by the luckiest of beings, all those nights in your cave, and huddled groups of brave revolutionaries whom you gave inspiration incarnate, until a land that was bare of any discipline or care was bedazzled by the flame of light and justice, and what reigned was love of God, love of all, and knowledge, and freedom. And that was all. Your every word was for free. Every breath was for us. And every bit was for real. Why don't we ever talk about you?